Hello and welcome back to the land of Seeker. And we're actually embroiled in a relatively large fight right here. And uh, this is Nicania, obviously, as we found out in the previous episode. They're not that dangerous, or at least I feel like they're not too dangerous. Maybe if they are numerous enough, then they're probably going to be quite, quite difficult to deal with. But now here's the thing. I need to get into battles. I need to get into a lot of battles pretty fast. Otherwise, I don't know whether you noticed my um, my money situation. What? What is actually going on here? This is a blizzard. This is a blizzard and a half, isn't it? Okay, that is actually kind of... Well, this is kind of weird. All right. Um, well, whatever the case. Um, yeah, my money situation is looking relatively dire at the moment. And so I'm very much wanting to... See if we can participate in some larger scale battles, or at the very least, try to eliminate as many enemies as I can get my hands on. So pretty much anything that is available right now would be good. Uh, so that is that is just what I'm attempting to do. So I'm hopeful that I'm going to survive for the majority of this fight, just so that we can actually start getting some decent experience for our own forces as well. I'm actually going to be telling my, my people just to do their own thing. And oh my, it literally, my horse literally just, okay. That is actually really bad. Okay, that is, that is actually really, really bad. Right, um, yeah, so my horse took massive overkill damage. I don't know whether that actually makes any difference to how often or how likely it is for a horse to become lamed. But my horse is now lamed, and this is one of the best horses in the game, or at least I think it is one of the best horses in the game. And so now, now, I'm, now I'm actually kind of frustrated because I thought to myself, oh yeah, I'm actually looking real good here. I got this wonderful horse. I'm pretty happy with that. And the only reason, by the way, why I am so low in terms of our money situation is because I actually just recruited a bunch of extra units. I recruited another 40 tier 2 units. And that cost me 5,600. Yeah, 5,600 for 40 of them. And I thought, well, maybe I should go for tier 1s. But then I thought, well, if I go for tier 1s, that's not really going to... It's not going to be that dangerous for the opponent, you know what I mean? So I, I kind of felt like I had to do something, and that something was to get Tier 2 and to give us a slightly better chance of achieving victory in one-on-one -on -one battles. Obviously, I'm not doing a one-on-one -on -one battle here, but you never know. I could have been, you know what I mean? I definitely could have been. So it would make sense for me to recruit higher tier units, but obviously me doing this now, well... Obviously, I was, not, I was not going to be aware that we would be going into a battle such as this, but oh well, never mind. I guess the best thing we can do now, try to get some headshots, <laughs> he says, as he shoots the legs. I mean, obviously, I had to shoot the legs because the guy had his shield up, but still, maybe we can uh, get a couple of extra kills. I did actually advance in level while I was doing a task. I did a task to protect a village from extortion by deserters, and that actually seemed to be pretty decent. Now I do have an attribute point and a focus point to spend, so I will hopefully be able to do that in a second after we are done here. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's a pretty much foregone conclusion here that we are going to win. Um, it seems like, I mean, we already had a pretty significant power disparity between the two forces, but we also have the um, the numbers advantage as well. So of course that's yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now these guys are just going to be running away here due to their morale. I'm going to try and eliminate a bunch of them while I have the opportunity to do so. It's going to give me some decent pole arm skill, or at least I can hope it will. And yeah, look at that. It's pretty nice and easy as well. And uh, obviously I haven't replaced my pole arm yet. I will be looking to get something like a Naganata or maybe something along those lines. I'm not entirely sure if they're going to be very easily available at the moment. But um, I will try. I will try and, and see whether there is um, something like that available in a nearby 
marketplace or something like that. Not entirely sure where we're going to find one. Probably in Lamoka territory, let's face it. You know, that is more than likely going to have something there because I believe that they are the, uh, shall we say, the Japanese-oriented faction for the most part because there are a number of a number of things that point to that, you know, samurai units, katanas, as well as various pieces of armor as well. Anyway, look at this. 271 food, 189 wood, and 13 stone. Actually pretty impressive. We only gained 16% of the loot, unfortunately, but I am actually able to take a large number of the prisoners which I gotta say I'm pretty happy about. And you can see here, look at my party size right now. This is only thanks to my quartermaster, which of course is Maliana. If you missed where we got Maliana from, well, uh, you'll, you'll see in the previous episodes. Anyway, oh, fantastic. Actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, this, this, this horse is now lame, so I'm gonna have to do something about that. So I will have to uh, probably just swap it out for the moment until it regenerates itself. And then we'll, um, we'll hopefully be able to ride it again. I, I can only hope that that will be the case. Anyway, as you can see, we did level up, not in that fight, but we did level up a little bit earlier. And I'm actually going to be taking Breeder here. Animals in your inventory have a very low chance to reproduce. I'm going to actually go for this this time around because I actually would just like to have a chance of getting additional horses. And I don't know whether... I don't know whether this counts as horses, but I, I can only hope that it will. And uh, otherwise, we also have our leadership skill leveled up as well. So what do we want to go for? I'm probably going to go for... <sighs> I actually don't know. We're probably going to go for Stout Defender because increasing the rate of recruiting Tier 4, 5, 6 prisoners by 50% could possibly be really good because I was told in the comments that the Dark demon units or various units that are very very strong they can be captured and if you can try to then get them into your army by keeping them as prisoners for a while then they can join you and you can have those really strong really strong units in your army so i'm hopeful that we might be able to do something along those lines otherwise i'm going to i'm going to continue increasing intelligence uh, um, i'm not sure about intelligence i'm going to continue increasing medicine though and I uh, see now I'm now I'm not entirely sure I would like to wait a minute where is the where is where is the thing that allows me to allows me to shoot any bow on horseback is it not is it not in the um, it's not in the riding tree it's not in the riding tree I actually thought it was in the riding tree it must be in the bow tree then Oh, that's actually interesting. Um, really? Yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, that, uh, that's kind of interesting. I would have th thought it would be in the riding tree, but okay, it's not. Anyway, so yeah, I need to get to 225. So I think I'm actually going to go for another point in control here so I can level up my bow skill just that much faster so that we can, we can potentially use one of those really powerful bows in battle. All right, so I don't think any of my people actually leveled up. Yeah, very few, actually none of my people leveled up in that particular fight, which is kind of sad. But, well, we can't really do much about that, I suppose. Otherwise, I'm just gonna head back to my settlement here, and how much am I actually... Oh, I, I got very little benefit from participating in that fight, actually. Very, very surprising. Kind of, eh, maybe not so surprising, considering we didn't really contribute that much to the overall victory of, uh, of our forces. So that is obviously reason for that anyway we have a massive amount of resources right here so i'm actually going to be building a another marketplace and that is hopefully going to enable us to um earn some more money and i will go into the trade screen right now and just basically sell everything there we go very nice look at that another 6600 okay so now my main goal is to try and find vassals in nicanian territory and literally just try to murder as many of them as i possibly can because if i can do that we're going to get some great mercenary skills and i'm actually getting 200 gold yes i am getting 200 gold every single day from my settlement now which is actually really nice and hello there oh yes i would like to fight you sir I would like to fight you. Why are you going over there? Don't go over there, you imbecile. 
I'm not entirely sure why he's going over there, but uh, please don't. Oh, okay, phew. I really did not want to get any of our allies in the fight. That would be really, really bad. Okay, so yeah, we're looking pretty good otherwise. And I'm actually thinking, you know what I would like to do? Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a... I wouldn't say I wouldn't say a terribly bad move, but I'm gonna do a move where I, I get a little bit more benefit from these arrows than Melethvon might, because Melethvon is really, really powerful as it is, and I need the extra arrow stack mounts because you can see here these have 34 and my previous arrow quiver had 21. So there's a significant amount more here, and I can always give them back to her when we have acquired a better a better quiver amount in the future or at least maybe we'll we'll do something like that anyway amaliana will be the leader of our infantry as she doesn't have a mount amusingly enough don't exactly know why she doesn't have a mount but okay and otherwise we're just going to be auto delegating here and just allowing our forces to do whatever they want to do because most of the time considering we do have a pretty significant amount of um, horse archer based units or mounted units most of the time uh, charging in usually has the best best way of going about things and i know some people they're probably going to say they're probably going to say no charging in is absolutely terrible it's a terrible idea but here's the thing horse archers will generally do what horse archers do and they're going to go in a rotational attack where they're going to just continually murder enemy units with their bows and that's really going to be all that we really need them to do as you can see right here they're not going charging straight on in you see that's the common misconception i've had many people <laughs> many people comment that in the uh, in the past and uh, just just know that you don't have to worry about it you don't have to worry because we, uh, we we know what's up we know what's up with these guys so you can see here look at my my horse archers they're doing a great job and I'm actually going to try and see if I can... You know what? I'm actually going to stop going around in circles. And I'm just kind of... I'm just going to sort of chill over here. And see if we can just pepper them a little bit from behind. Seems like a better idea than not doing that. And uh, we can maybe get some extra experience that way. Nice. Took out that guy's horse. And we're actually losing a lot of people to their melee units. Obviously, as you might expect, my own melee units are not really up to scratch, unfortunately, uh, with dealing with these guys. That's actually one of the main reasons why I was a bit worried about um, fighting the Nicanians, first of all. But... I think my horse archers will be able to achieve victory here. Oh, oh my. Okay, we almost actually succumbed to our wounds. Thankfully, I can get away because I am on a horse. Melethon is getting murdered, as you might expect. Okay. Yeah, these guys actually... Whoa, okay. <laughs> that was actually some pretty good damage right there, but yeah. I don't think we're going to have any real difficulties. Wait a minute, where are my forces? Why are these guys all the way over here fighting each other? That is absolutely wasteful. Okay, yeah, but most of the time my forces are going to be absolutely fine dealing with these fellows. And we're just going to speed it up and get them uh, get them to achieve victory. Yep, there we go. As you can see, they literally just go around in circles even if they are given the charge order. So you don't have to worry about that. Anyway, there we go. We were able to achieve victory. I did end up losing 23 units, actually pretty significant, but we are, as a result of this, actually going to be gaining a pretty significant amount of money, and we are also going to hopefully level up most of our tier two units into tier three. And I'm actually wondering whether I should take this guy prisoner now because we are always having money issues. So I think I will take him prisoner. And I should have actually sold these guys when I was... Um, when I was at my uh, at my town, should have definitely done that. I was a bit of a, an idiot about that. Okay, I'm not entirely sure whether I will keep the pirates. I don't think I'm going to rescue the pirates for the moment. I could put them in my garrison, but do I really want to? Not particularly. So I'm just going to leave them the way it is. And we're actually going to just do a little bit of something here. We're just going to take the highest tier units. And that is it. There we go. I don't have any more space for prisoners, unfortunately. Okay. Anything else to, that I want to take here? No, I don't think so. I could also donate some of my armor and weapons and things like that. 
to give myself more experience, but I think I need the money more than anything. And it seems like, as you can see, a bunch of armies attempting to take Kranarok Castle at the moment, which is actually pretty nice for them. And uh, yeah, so now my mercenary wages are a little better and we are not having so much of a big wage either. Probably should have put those fellows in the garrison, all things considered. That probably would have made a bit more sense. Oh, look at that. We're making 300 gold right now. 300 gold from my settlement. That's actually insane. That is really, really good. And how come I only got 2,200 for selling my prisoners when it said 4,900 on the tavern screen? Did you see that? Okay, that's actually kind of weird. All right, not entirely sure what's going on there, but yeah, now we have 13,000. Pretty nice. And did I level up? Mm, yes, my medicine skill actually leveled up. So let's actually take a quick look here. Decrease, uh, mm, increasing potential prisoners. I think we usually get a significant amount of those anyway. So I don't think we really need to worry about it. I think sledges could be really, really useful because as you can see, it does increase the health of every mount in your party, which is actually kind of amazing considering most of our forces are mounted and decrease wounded party speed penalty by 50%. Yeah, we're also going to be taking that. That sounds pretty good. All right. Yeah, so now we're doing a little better in terms of our money situation and we also have some people that are, are starting to level up too. So the more that we can fight these Nicanians, the better. So we really just want to get into as many fights with them as possible. Oh, unfortunately, they're actually, my, my allies are actually charging after someone right now that would have been fantastic for us to fight one-on-one. -on -one. That would have been really amazing for us. Yeah, people are, yeah, people are wanting to marry Melethvon. I do not want that. Thank you very much. That is not good for us because then she's just going to go off and join someone else's clan. And as we found out, that is not particularly good. I'm just going to fight these guys real quick. If I can fight them by myself. And we're just going to auto-resolve against them as best we can. Not going to take any prisoners. Just going to be doing the standard stuff. And uh, yeah, so we are obviously going to... Oh, hello. We are obviously going to go back and try to persuade Lotus to join us. I obviously don't know whether that's even possible in this game. I know I think it is possible in Warband that you can do that, where you can basically go to someone and say, hey, do you want to do you want to leave your spouse? And do you want to, you know, do you want to come with me? And uh, and so on. So I'm wondering whether we're going to be able to do that with Lotus as well. Maybe if we have a high enough relation with her, and she has a low enough relation with him. Maybe we can make that happen, but not holding out too much hope for it at the moment. Anyway, once again, we're just going to do this. I'm actually going to tell my archers to... Wait a minute, where's the enemy? They're around about here. So I'm going to tell my archers to hold position instead of just telling them to do whatever. And maybe we can get a couple of kills myself this time. Getting some decent damage. Not too bad. Right now, I'm just trying to level up my bow skills so that we can actually start using some of those more powerful bows. And once more of the enemy have been eliminated, I will switch to my pole arm and we'll see what we can do with that. Maybe I can try and get some, a little bit of experience with that too. As you can see, we're actually doing some significant damage with this, mostly because we do have the ability to now shoot so much more consistently. That was the main problem that I was facing with my previous quiver because obviously if I don't have arrows, I'm not going to be able to earn experience. And this time, obviously with the increased volume of arrows, it's so much better. It really is. And obviously we do have a much greater amount of damage that is coming from the arrows as well. Even though it's just plus one, plus one, plus one increased damage, it's still going to make a pretty significant difference 
overall. Because if you think about it, quivers and arrows and so on and so forth, they usually just give you plus one, plus two, plus three, and if you're lucky, plus four. I don't think I've ever seen anything that's plus five, maybe in a mod somewhere or another, but yeah, point is, those small little increases actually make a pretty significant difference over time to the amount of damage you can deal. Anyway, we're just going to be taking this guy prisoner, going to be taking the other forces prisoner as well, leveling all of those guys up into mounted units now, finally. And uh, yeah, I'm actually wondering, is this guy even going to be able to take this? Is he going to be able to take that? That particular... Wow, this is a large faction. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, but I'm wondering if he's even going to be able to take that town. If he's able to take that town, then that would, that would be really, really good for us because then I could actually go over there and sell my prisoners instead of having to run all the way back to our friendly settlement. But I suppose it's not even that bad. Uh... Oh, 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 hello there. There's a rebellion going on. There's a rebellion over there. Okay, this might be the opportunity that we've been waiting for. It might be an opportunity for me to become a vassal. Now, obviously, I would love to be able to send a messenger right now to the leader of the faction and ask, hey, can I become a vassal right now? But I don't think that's going to be possible. Yeah, as you can see right there, we are only getting 400 for our... Um, for our prisoners, I think we might have overstayed our welcome or uh, overused the ransom broker in this particular town. I'm actually not entirely sure what's going on with the diminishing returns that I'm currently getting, but um, I don't know. Maybe someone can shed some light on that or something. I'm not entirely sure what's what's happening there. But anyway, what's actually going on here? Oh, yeah. So you can upgrade the player home and you can <laughs> then create a golden palace with that. That's actually kind of amazing. And uh, let's go into the hospital real fast and just heal ourselves. And there we go. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so I'm actually wondering, I've got 15,000. I might be able to recruit some more people. Um, I don't want to spend another 5,000. I could spend 5,000. We just have so much space. That's the thing. We have so much space. So I'm thinking, uh, should I do it? Let's do 25. Let's do 25. That's only going to be 3,400. That's not too bad. And we now have 75 units once again. And if we can get people, well, if, if we can get enemies into a battle with us, then that's obviously going to be really, really good. Okay, increase combat movement speed. Pole arms can knock down. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess we'll go for that. I, I don't even know, to be honest. Uh, what about charm skill? Charm skill could be really good. One-handed athletics. We'll go for charm skill. Why not? Why not? I mean, eventually we're going to be able to get focus points maxed out in all of those major skills. So we really don't have to worry too much about that. And charm skill could be quite useful as time goes on. I'm actually wondering where our, um, where our leader is. Where is he? He is at Nakera. Nakera, where is that? He is... Oh, he's very far away. All right, that's, um, yeah, that's actually kind of, that's actually kind of sad. It would be really, really cool if we could become a vassal right now because I would love to be able to take this back. I, I think I would maybe be able to take it back. That's the, that's the thing, though. It's a bit of a question mark. Mm, 242. Okay, yeah, I probably wouldn't be able to take it back. So it's actually fine if we don't become a vassal right now oh wait a minute okay nicania is fighting back as you can quite clearly tell right there okay that's really bad for us uh, i'm not even entirely sure ah there we go there we go okay those are the those are the forces that we're fighting back we can actually take this guy on i think i should be able to achieve victory actually wait a minute should i just auto resolve right here Mm, I'm what, mm, yeah, you know, you know what, I think I probably could have auto-resolved, but I'm going to be a little bit, a little bit more, I don't know, I, a little bit smarter, shall we say. Let's just be a little bit smarter, because the thing is, even though an auto-resolve would probably result in some pretty decent, mm, well, pretty decent experience gains and everything, I'm not going to get any of those experience gains. And obviously, I really do want to get that bow skill up. So 
the best that we can do is just hopefully try to do a little bit of that and then well hopefully we'll be able to use some of those better bows and uh, obviously if we can just eliminate these forces without having to worry so much about casualties as well then we'll be able to fight the next vassal on top of that so i guess it's better that i don't auto resolve but auto resolves are just generally a lot more i don't know they feel like they give me more experience but maybe that's just me I'm not entirely sure I don't think they do give me more experience, but yeah, I can basically just look at the. <laughs> these guys are not even taking. They're, they're, they're not. They're, they're not even taking paying me any attention right here. They're, they're, they're not giving me any attention whatsoever, and I'm just literally headshotting as many of them as I want. That is kind of a bad idea, guys. That is a really, really bad idea. It would probably be much better for you to start attacking me, but uh, maybe I shouldn't say that. There's all my forces coming in. And they are absolutely murdering everything. Nice to see. Bear in mind that these guys actually do come equipped with axes. And uh, my, my guys, that is. My, my uh, tier 2 custom units do have axes because I wanted some forces that were lower tier to actually have the ability to penetrate enemies defenses so for example these shield warriors or whatever they're called i'm not entirely sure what their what their official name is but the nicanians have these have these units with double shields they've got double shields equipped and so axes having a bunch of units with axes is going to be able to destroy those shields relatively fast or at least that is the idea and we're just going to be taking these guys prisoner and then we can level these forces up as well fantastic all right, we'll take all of those too. Okay, so now let's actually just take a quick look and see what's the... Oh, hello. Yep, yep. Uh, give me that uh, 15 renown. Oh, wow. That's actually amazing. Okay, that is really, really good. Okay, so now... Ah, there is a nearby town. Okay, so I'm going to see whether we can actually get... Look at that. 2,000 gold right there, yeah? No, look at that. 331. I'm not entirely sure. That's actually kind of strange. I can assume that it has something to do with diminishing returns in some way or another, or it could be due to my extremely low roguery skill, because my roguery, it, it couldn't be due to that, right? It really can't be due to that, because this only affects my battle loot. That surely can't, can't be the reason why I'm getting so little from the Ransom Brokers, but it must be a diminishing return of some kind that is being applied, which is very sad, in my opinion. It is very sad. Oh well, never mind. We have 10,000 gold, and I'm pretty happy with that anyway. Ah, hello there. Hmm, we might be able to take two vassals on. What do you think? Wait a minute, let's just have a quick look here. I was actually thinking that this guy might have some, uh, might have some relatively unique units, because he is from some place that I've never heard of, this clan that I've never heard of. But apparently that doesn't make any difference. So let's just go straight on in. We do have a slight... Hmm. Yes, we have a slight combat... We're actually, we're actually at a bit of a disadvantage. Okay, this might be interesting. All right, I'm at 175 in bows. Let's get some more experience, shall we? Let's get some more experience and see if I can finally get to 175, maybe even 200 in this battle. I doubt it. Highly doubt it. Oh, and we are in the trees. This is absolutely awful. This is really, really bad. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, this is really bad in actual fact. I do not like this one bit. I like this much more. Uh, fighting over here. Are there no places for us to fight? Okay, ah, here we go. This might be a little better. Okay, we're going to move our forces over here. I have 20 archers. I'm going to spread those out a little bit more, like so. And we have a couple of infantry as well. Let's put these infantry in the front here. This is so incredibly bad for me as a primarily uh, horse archer based build, as well as my own high tier units being horse archers as well. This is going to be very, very dangerous because the, the Nicanians, as we know, they are very good with infantry and they are going to absolutely murder us in close quarters combat so the best thing that i can do is just hold position and just hope that my forces can destroy them from range that is pretty much all i can really hope for because our mobility is cut down to a crawl here 
What is it? Why is this guy getting out his... <laughs> okay, that was really, really weird. I have no idea why he would get out his polearm without a shield against an archer, but um, he did. Yes, that was amusing. Okay, I'm going to get shot a little bit here. Okay, yeah, this is exactly my point. There are so many different little obstacles and, and objects in the way, but thankfully my forces are completely destroying the enemy right here. Yeah, really, really nice, actually. And this is also the reason why I wanted to go for units at a low tier that actually had thrown weapons, because I don't know whether you've noticed, but the thrown weapons have actually been getting quite a few kills, I think, at least. I think they've been getting some pretty decent kills. And that's actually why I wanted the lower tier ones to have thrown weapons. So let me actually just tell my forces to charge in, tell my horse archers to charge in as well. Obviously, the horse archers really just need to get behind the opponent. If they can get behind the opponent, then they're not going to be able to block as effectively, because bear in mind, these guys actually do have shields on their backs as well, which is making them into very effective walking tanks and uh, it's definitely making it much more difficult for us but thankfully we were able to achieve victory just by holding position hilariously enough I suppose that's the reason why the Nicanians do have such a I don't know they, they they seem very much like the Nords from from Warband because from from there you can imagine I mean you know if you remember the Nords from Warband they had a primary focus on heavy infantry and that was pretty much it they did have some good archers but their archers were not really that good from range they were much better in melee than any other archers but the point is heavy infantry and that was it that's all they had available to them i'm actually going to be letting these guys go apparently because they don't seem to really want to give me any kind of benefit to uh selling them or anything like that so i might as well just take some regular units and sell those instead or try to sell those as much as i can and otherwise are we near but nearby to a particular town uh kind of okay yeah we can move over here we do have another wow yeah we've got a bunch of other vassals in the area here as well which i would be able to deal with look at this we've got decent charm skill right here okay i'm gonna increase relationship gain with the same gender Sounds pretty good, and we're also going to um, cause 20% more battle morale penalty with ranged kills while mounted. That sounds good to me too. And you can zoom in 50% more, or you take 10% uh, less damage from projectiles. I don't really zoom in that much, hilariously enough. However, increasing your, your sight range on the campaign map, that's actually really good. So if you're worried about getting ambushed or anything like that, I'd definitely take Eagle Eye. But for me specifically, I don't really care about that too much. So I'm going to be going for Skirmish Phase Master because I generally get myself killed from enemy projectiles like thrown weapons and stuff like that. So I would very much like to try and prevent that from happening in the future. And there you go. They have now made peace. And I will be selling... Oh, look at that. I sold my prisoners and I actually gained 1,600 which is exactly what it said I was going to gain. That's kind of weird. All right. Well, I'm, I'm happy with that, nevertheless. And I'm going to be able to sell all of my loot for 6,800. And they've made peace. So I will no longer be fighting against the Nicanians. Which is actually not even that bad. Because we do have a rebel... Re blah, blah, blah. We still have a rebel faction to deal with. So that's obviously still on the agenda. And these guys can possibly be used to farm a little bit of extra experience as well. Um, but it very much depends. You decide to give him some food and water. It's going to help the lonely wanderer a little bit. And uh, I'm, I'm actually wondering whether these guys actually even exit. Yeah, they do exit a little bit, as you can see right here. But are these guys actually any good? No, they, they, this guy literally has 39 Mogrian recruits. And that is pretty much it. So, for example, if I wanted to do an auto-resolve here, how many am I going to lose? I lost six units. That's not even bad. That's not even bad. But the main reason, I just want I just want the prisoners, you know? I just want the prisoners. Because what's really funny about this now is that because we have made peace with the, uh, with the Nicanians, you decide not to explore. Nothing happened. That's good. Um, but yeah, uh, because we've made peace with them, I can now go to any town in the area except this one. 
and do whatever I want. I can sell my loot there, I can rest up, I can buy some food. Hilariously enough, speaking of food, I actually have way too much of it at the moment, and I think I'm having a herd problem. Am I not having a herd problem? No, I don't have a herd problem. Okay. Ooh, this is new. Your army meets a noble messenger who said that if you like, they can help you to manage some relationships. All right, yeah, you decide to ask him to help. Oh, it seems like the Aryans have actually declared war on the Lamoka now. Okay, that's going to be kind of interesting, because the Aryans are actually quite far away as far as I'm aware. So let's just sell those prisoners. 1,400, not too bad. We can also sell this loot here for another 3,000. Yeah, we're making some pretty decent cash right now. And my... <laughs> oh dear, my party wages are skyrocketing, he says, as he upgrades more. Uh, yeah, it's probably ill-advised, isn't it? But yes, the Aryans, as you can see, are all the way over here. I guess it's not that far away. Uh, you think your army has plenty of food. And, uh, okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this episode off here. And next time we're going to be doing battle against the Aryans. Maybe I'll uh, see what I can do about maybe becoming a vassal. I'm not entirely sure whether that's even viable at this point because we are very much relying on our mercenary contracts. So maybe if I can earn li a little bit of extra money... Mm, then maybe I will be able to do it. Maybe if I have a, a little bit of a nest egg of about maybe 40, maybe 50,000 gold, I should be able to easily get there if I can continue to do battles with vassals. So I will be heading on over to Yarian territory after I've fought a bunch of these guys over here, and then we'll see what we can do in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.